Today we continue flying over Romania with A model's IAR-80, coming up next. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in this box? What's in the box? Hey, welcome back to another great model airplane unboxing right here on Monster Hobby's channel. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you very much for supporting us out here on YouTube land. You know, this is a very, very filled up type of place. It's like a major city of videos. And I'm glad that you guys found me in this great big commotion of video mania. <laughs> but anyway, if you like watching these unboxing videos, please subscribe down below if you haven't already and click that notification bell because when you click the notification bell and I release a video, it goes right electronically to your notification place and tells you, hey, Trev made another video for what's in the box. So come on down and check it out. Now, without further ado, we are going to open up the A model IAR-80, the Romanian fighter. And this one here was actually flown by Ion Milu back in the 40s. So without further ado, uh, let's go down and see what's in the box. But I want to tell you something. I'm going to leave a little space at the top of the video as I'm opening this up. And it's going to be filled with new facts all about these aircraft. So without further ado, let's go down and see what's in the box. Now we take again to the friendly skies as we see our IAR-80 kit as flown by pilot Jan Milou uh, from A model. So to begin with, we can look at this nice artwork. I really like the artwork on these boxes, they're nice. And our box of course has in English and in Russian. And nothing on the back. <laughs> yes, again, nice one from A model, which is a Russian based company. Now, as we open up the box here, we note one thing that's really nice. Everything is in a Ziploc bag. So I don't have to chop anything open, which is great. But let's just move the box bottom out of the way here and open up the Ziploc. Nice and resealable. And we can see that we get a little decal sheet stapled together. Huh. Interesting. We get a ton of plastic parts, including clear. And we get our instructions. So I hope you like this review. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, we are going to start with our instruction sheet. Make sure the camera's all the way back because these are big. So we've got a black and white instruction sheet again. And we have the nice box artwork there so we know what we're building. And we've got the history in English and in Russian. Then they have some symbols that they're using to help you build your model, as well as the paint colors. And they're using Humbrol colors for the paint fallout. Then we have a parts description, and they have these blanked off areas here and here and there and there to show you what parts you are not using in the kit so that you can decipher you know, from this massive amount of parts, what plane you're building. So A model has done a cost cutting uh, thing. What they've done is they've made it so that all their IAR-80 kits are these same plastic molds. It's just a matter of markings in the decal sheet. So here we have our um, inside <laughs> the cockpit. This is where the pilot would be sitting, so there's his little platform. It's got your pedals and the seat back and the yoke. And then here it shows the interior and it's got the ribs in there. There's one thing I always need to know is when you do your interior and you glue it in, this is all painted, let's assume, you glue your model together and then you've got the seam line and you clean up the seam line and you paint your plane. How do you guys, when you use airbrushes, 
protect the interior from being painted? If you know, please write in the comments below. Okay, so now we get into the radial engines. Now what's cool about this airplane is the Romanians actually had two radial engines, one behind the other, which gave this plane massive amounts of speed. And it was used from when it was developed, about 1938, all the way up to 1950 in the Romanian Air Force. But after the war, Romania was uh, taken over by the Russians, so it became a communist country. So the planes were used by the communists up until 1950. Okay, so here it shows the airplane going together. And it's got these little teeny bits here that go on the outside of the cowling. Those are exhaust pipes for your radial engine. And then here we see our wheels, our wings and everything going together. And they've got this separate piece here, which is interesting. That's for your landing gear to go in, molded separately. And then of course we've got the upside down of the plane, showing where all the wheel struts go in. And if you're a clever person, these are shown with the landing gear down, but if you're a clever person, you can actually omit some of these parts and glue the wheels in there and have the covers so you've got your landing gear up. If you've done this before, please let us know in the comments down below. And finally, the last bit of the instructions is, of course, the paint palette and decal location, again using the Humbrol paints over here. Now we are going to look at the decal sheet, or the decal sheet, which is two decal sheets with a staple there, a metal staple, holding them together. Uh, now, I don't know why some of the manufacturers are doing this kind of stuff. They'll, mo they'll make a decal of the red ring and keep it outside of the actual decal for some reason. This is supposed to represent the King Michael Cross. But they've used black as a border and black as a central dot. This is a mistake. As you can see uh, on the box art over here, the, the King Michael Cross is actually red, yellow, and blue, which coincides with the tail rudder which of course coincides with the Romanian flag. And the problem we have here with these deck holes is that they've done them in black. And there is no color for the rudder on this actually, which is interesting because the yellow is there. So they just have the yellow as a dividing deck hole, which, well, I guess that's not such a bad idea. There of course are the 42, with, which would be its uh, squadron that it's in. And, I don't think you can see it, but they give you these little victory markings. Which are the planes that were shot down from Jan Milou's uh, ace record. Now we are going to look at the sprue that contains the fuselage and the rear stabilizers, as well as the cowling here. And that's pretty cool. Produced by Master. So that's a neat little uh, emblem there. Okay, anyway, manufacturer's mark. So we've got quite a, a bit of nice detail, a little bit soft, but it's got all the louvers on your behind your cowlings and some rudder detail, as well as the instrument panels. There's some nice detail on the floorboards there as well as the cowls, so quite cool. And now we go get into our next sprue here, which has your payload, the bombs that these planes carried. Now that was a derivative, I think it was the IAR-81B that had the bombs, so some of these parts you will not be using in this kit, but the detail is still relatively nice. There's the wheels there. They also go and clip into these struts. Now notice a little little bit of a half pin here. 
you could actually pop these wheels in and then the wheels should be able to uh, spin on those axles. Uh, maybe, I don't know. All depends how you set it up, of course. But nice detail on that parts tree. Then we get into this here. And we have the nose cap for your cowl, as well as your engine, engines, the front and the back one. And again, some soft detail on the cylinder heads for the engine there. We've got a propeller and we've got two variations of the wheel um, housings. So you'll have to look and see specifically which one it is. This one seems to be a bit taller than this one. It's actually defined like there's there's a gap there so you've got an A and a B and this one is almost like molded as a one piece. So depending on which variation you're building make sure you, you get the right one in there. Then you got your nose cone and that little center divot in the middle of the nose cone is a centrally mounted machine gun which was also on the measure smiths in case you're wondering. And we have two more sprues left in the gray color. It is the wing bottom, or no, nope, wing top. There's where your wheels would go in. And there's the wing bottom there. Now it's interesting when you lay these over top of one another, how they're glued together. You've actually got the trailing edge here of your aileron molded into the bottom of the wing, which is rather unique. Most of these are have this seam as an A and a B. Same with the wing tips. They're molded in. But it's kind of nice because when you put this together like that, when it's glued down, the seam line is on the trailing edges inside, so you don't really see them like you do when you get the, the two parts squishing down perfectly. You know, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. <laughs> so yeah, there's both our wings. And again, some nice little, although a bit soft, details in there. And finally, for plastic components, we have our canopy. And this one actually is very, very clear. And you'll need to, of course, paint the little uh, braces in the front. But that is basically it. And that concludes our examination of the IAR80 Yan Melu Ace Series Kit from A Model. Well, thank you so much for watching this video of the IAR80 by A Model. And I really hope you learned a lot about Romanian air fighter combat history, because it's very important. You know, we don't want Romanian planes to go out of our conscious memory, because Romania actually did a lot in World War II. And did you know that there was a... Ro Romania originally was part of the Axis powers, but there was a coup d'etat in 1944, which uh, historians have actually uh, recognized that with that coup d'etat, it actually sped up the end of World War II by about six months. So Romania had quite a significant part in the war, even though history has sort of you know, passed it over for things like Battle of Britain and Vimy Ridge and things like that. <laughs> I think Vimy was World War I, whoops, but anyway. <laughs> okay, so yes. Now, if you enjoy these videos, and again, I'll encourage you to subscribe to YouTube, but if you want to sort of leave me a little tip, you know, to say thanks for making these videos and spending all your time opening up models that, hey, I would have had to buy at the hobby shop for who knows how much, or import, because A model's out of Russia, I believe. And, you know, maybe you don't have the money, or maybe you're curious, you know, before you go and buy this and put the money down to see what's in the box, remember that I did it for your benefit. So if you want to leave a tip, you can do so on our Patreon account. So don't forget to check that out over there. I'm going to leave the link below. And if you become a Patreon, you actually get some benefits from Monster Hobbies. Number one, depending on, there's tier levels, 
starting at a dollar and ending at 20, depending on in those tier levels, there's five, you can get something cool like your names in the credits, like right here. And those are the names of some of my Patreons. And not only can you get the name in the credits, depending on what tier, you can get stickers, you can get special Monster Hobbies pencil, you can get a t-shirt, and many other cool things. So please go over, check it out in the link below, and please become one of our Patreons. You don't have to. You can, you know, leave a little tip. Uh, you can do it on a monthly basis or you could just do it at one time. There's all kinds of options over there, but any support is welcomed and appreciated. So thank you very much. Now, if you want to see some other cool unboxing videos, please check them out here, 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 and here. And don't forget to like and subscribe and the notification button and all that stuff down here. And until next time, happy flying.